Hey there! Welcome! This... This... It's my keyser or kegerator. It's actually a keyser because it's made from a freezer, a chest freezer. In this video I will show you a few features of this and uh, how I built it. Uh, actually not how I built it, but what I built. This is not a tutorial, it's more like a showcase. And maybe you can get inspiration from this because in my opinion it's uh, one of the best uh, builds that I saw on YouTube. So, by the way, this is a diploma that I got because I won a amateur brewer competition last year in Nice with my sour beer. Well, let's get closer. So this is my keyser, which is actually like a bar. Okay, I have a glass here, put it here. This is a scratch resistant vinyl that I bought. It has four taps. These are taps from Kegland, they are the Nuka taps. Do not buy them in black ever because they flake and they will start to look horrible. This is actually a gear tray that I designed and I 3D printed because I wanted something very low profile, something easy to clean and something that goes around it. So it's a semicircle. So they are very low profile, they add a bit of color, red, because black and red, everybody likes black and red. So to open it, which is, happens very rarely, you just slide it like this on the casters. It slides very easily even if it's full. Now you have enough room to open it and to not hit the wall with the taps. Ta-da! But more on this later. Let me show you what's inside. So here you have three 19 liter uh, soda kegs with uh, Bola connectors. Also each line is uh, numbered and they come from the tap which is right here. Inside there is also the CO2 bottle which was a very important criteria for me. Everything should have been inside the kegerator and very mobile if I want to put it in another room on my house or in another corner I can just roll it away. So this uh, CO2 above it is a storage tray which is very good for cans. You can remove this and actually here put another smaller keg because like you saw I have four beer lines and four gas lines. So this uh, CO2 bottle has uh, two exits and I'm always keeping them at a very high pressure. This one, which goes directly there, might look uh, a bit weird because it's a beer ball lock connected to a gas line. Why I'm doing this, it's because I want to fastly carbonate some beer and I am actually pushing two bars right into the soda keg on the beer line. So this is how you get fast carbonation. Maybe I'll make a video about that as well. And let's follow the other gas line which goes from here. Of course both of them have uh, valves to close them. And it goes all the way up to this manifold. You come uh, here with the line from the CO2 cylinder and it splits into four. What this means is I can individually set the pressure for each keg that I have here. And this is important because I'm making different styles of beer and each and every one of them has a different uh, setting for the carbonation and what pressure they need to be at. The temperature that I'm keeping this uh, freezer it's always 4 degrees Celsius. So uh, depending on this temperature I will set up the pressure for each style to be uh, higher or lower. Also this came initially with uh, 60 psi uh, gauge all of them and I uh, just uh, replaced those with uh, these two are 30 psi max and this one are 15. So I can keep those two at a lower pressure for cylinder 1 and 2 for kegs sorry 1 and 2 and this one can go all the way to 30 psi. Also this Gauges are very easy to replace. And you might see a theme here, but everything it's with push, connect and disconnect. Everything uses the same system from Kegland. These are called Duotite. It's their system is very good. This is also 
a line from Kegland. The only thing I don't like about this it's if you look here these one-way valves they don't really work they still let beer go the other way instead of just stopping it here which is a bit weird in my opinion because uh, this is their only purpose in life to stop the flow in the other direction so what's up with that this fan it's actually connected to this power brick which is from an uh, Amazon Kindle so you have 220 power grid coming here it's getting transformed into 5 volts and this 12 volt fan it's powered by 5 volts why I put it here it's to cool down the temperature controller because of the huge amount of isolation that these freezers have that temperature controller was not getting properly cooled and I might or might have not burned already two of them because of this until I realize what's happening why am I running this 12 volt fan at 5 volts is because uh, at 12 volts is too loud and I don't want to hear it when I sit on my couch which is right behind me and now it's very quiet and as a bonus I still have a USB port here so I can hook up a USB flashlight and have light in the freezer if I somehow opening it this at night also you notice here there is another wire this wire is actually the temperature sensor and that sensor goes right there where is the pink bottle normally that bottle is filled up with water and the sensor goes directly into the water. This way I will have an accurate temperature of the liquid and not of the air inside the freezer which is also very important to store beer properly because the air inside the freezer it's a different temperature from the liquid inside the kegs so this way I will have an accurate temperature of the liquid here in this space it's uh, I don't know if you can uh, tell how big it is but you can fit easily a 3 liter bottle and you can use one of these which is a system from Kegland that you can transfer any soda bottle into a mini keg so basically now you can have a disposable 2 liter keg that pipe should be longer, ignore this this is a new bottle that I just got now so it fits here perfectly it rests on the bottom there you can connect the gas ball lock, the beer ball lock and now you have a mini keg another thing, that space there, it's a huge space that's where I usually kept my nitrogen bottle and the uh, nitrogen regulator was sitting right here in this area I was using that for uh, nitro coffee and uh, for uh, nitro stout the problem with that is that uh, I don't have anywhere to recharge it so I had a gas leak and it uh, leaked away so now I'm left with a 2 kilo bottle uh, of uh, nitrogen which is empty and not uh, rechargeable in France it's very difficult to get gas if you're not a company that sounds weird to get gas maybe eat some beans or something I hope you enjoyed this uh, video leave me your uh, opinions in the comments I'll read uh, every one of them you might think that oh, okay I could have bought something similar even from kegland for three kegs but uh, it was nothing like like this it was no commercial variant of uh, their kegerators who had the co2 bottle inside also the nitrogen bottle inside like uh, i'm still thinking to to recharge that but it fits there perfectly so it's 91 centimeters in length with it's around 55 with the hinges and the height is maybe it's 90 it's exactly 90 without without the tap of course but that's because i put the wheels which by the way i will show it to you now so as you can see it's uh, on some plywood here and uh, it has casters also another thing that i wanted i wanted to have a chest freezer and not a fridge like most of the kegerators commercially available are when you open the door and all the cold escapes freezers are very well isolated this uh, temperature controller it's uh, like working I think maybe twice a day if it's hot in regards to the cost you might think this is uh, cheaper than to buy a commercial one the way I built it with individual pressure regulation for each of the line with uh, all the, the CO2 components and all the ball locks and all the push to fit connectors this got actually very expensive 
one feature I needed to have was to be on wheels because the way it's designed, it actually it's meant to take it off, to open it. I don't mind to just move for glasses and the speaker to, to open this from like once in a while. Also it works as a very good bar or as a standing desk. I can have my keyboard and mouse and work here on this computer. You can put all the music you want, you are next to the beer, next to the computer, you serve beer, you put music. Basically you are the soul of the party. The only problem is I have no more friends, so I am the party here. Yeah. So if you know somebody who is into craft beer, uh, share this video with them, maybe they will get inspired to build one of these systems. I can tell you that I switched quite quickly from uh, bottling to kegging. You do a, th a thing once instead of 60 times and uh, when you bottle so many bottles you basically lose your joy to, to make beer. I had to quickly switch to the kegging system and with my fermenter, which by the way watch my last video on the, how I made this fermentation station, an easy system to use and uh, actually it's a bit dangerous because I have beer on tap now every day and when I'm thirsty I'm just having cold beer on tap, starting to get a belly. So thank you for watching, let me know what you think about this in the comments and uh, subscribe because uh, next time I will show you how to make a beer transfer of my, actually you can hear it bubbling in the fermenter, of my, uh, what did I make this time, of my New England uh, IPA. So I will make uh, an oxygen free beer transfer from the fermenter to the keg which it's very important for uh, hazy beers and for very hoppy beers. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye. I want a beer now again.